Great news. You do not need to be an overly intelligent person to become a billionaire. Case in point, Mark Cuban. <laughs> Mark Cuban, top Kamala Harris surrogate, a guy who's going out there trying to defeat Donald Trump, trying to get white dudes to vote for Kamala, was on The View because, you know, a lot of white dudes watch the, I guess white dudes for Kamala watch The View. And I won't play you the clip because The View likes to strike us with copyright strikes. But what Mark Cuban said about Donald Trump and more specifically women who Donald Trump surrounds himself with caught some major backlash and he got scorched on social media by some of the biggest, brightest, strongest women we know. His comment about Donald Trump was, and I quote, he never surrounds himself with strong, intelligent women ever. End quote. Well, as you can imagine, a lot of strong, intelligent women who uh, hang out with Donald Trump and who have worked with Donald Trump took umbrage uh, and offense to this remark and spoke out on behalf of, well, themselves and the uh, former president of the United States. Also, Byron Donalds, a congressman from Florida, said, look, this is a this is a this is becoming a habit now. Three days ago, Tim Walz called us all Nazis. Two days after Joe Biden called half of America garbage. Now Mark Cuban is out there calling Republican women weak and unintelligent. Another person who took umbrage with this was Alveda King, PhD. Dr. King is the niece of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the number one human rights activist and, uh, and uh, civil rights activist of all time. And she went in her car, she hit record on her phone, and she had this message for Mark Cuban. Heads up. Mark Cuban just said, and I quote, there are no strong, intelligent women around President Trump. Cuban's words are mean, sad, and misogynistic. And the left can't even define what a woman is. I am evangelist Alveda King, and I pray for my friend, President Donald John Trump. Yeah. Look, I lo I'm going to miss Heads this. Up. Oh yeah, sorry. Wait. I'm going to miss this campaign so much, man. I'm going to I'm going to miss the <laughs> the un just the unexpected things that happen every single day. For example, Mark Cuban getting reamed by Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece for being a misogynist. That's not something I saw coming in this campaign. But you never know what you're going to get. You never know when the candidate's going to show up working at a McDonald's or working the drive through You never know when the president of the United States is going to hand him a victory by saying something like this. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. I mean, again, between Mark Cuban and Bill Clinton and, and Joe Biden, Donald Trump has three of the three of the greatest campaign minds right there. They are all the all three of them torpedoing Kamala Harris's campaign and just adding fuel to the Donald Trump fire. For all of the people out there that needed an excuse to support Donald Trump, they're getting them. They're getting them. If you are on the fence, if you're a moderate, if you're like, I just don't know if I, you know, Donald Trump seems like he's divisive. Donald Trump seems like he's antagonistic. But then you go out and you hear Kamala Harris's vice presidential camp uh, candidate calling everybody Nazis, saying that that black and white and Jewish and Asian and Indian people who were at a rally in Ma Madison Square Garden are all Nazis. It's a Nazi rally. Hillary Clinton saying they're reenacting a Nazi rally from 1939. Then you've got Joe Biden with the garbage comment. And now, and now Mark Cuban, billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks and star of Shark Tank, which why is this guy even a thing? Why is he even speaking out? Thank God he is because he's angering a lot of women, a lot of women who now may go out and vote for Donald Trump because they don't like what Mark Cuban said on The View. Uh, there's more. There's tons more. Look, this is Riley Gaines. You know, Riley Gaines, athlete and activist. Listen to, uh, listen to what she said. All right, let's just unpack this really quick. Just in the past week alone, Trump supporters have been called Nazis by virtually every media outlet. Uh, we have been called garbage by the sitting United States president. Uh, and now Mark Cuban has come out and said there is no such thing as a strong, intelligent female supporter of Donald Trump because they don't exist. Respectfully, Mark Cuban, you would not know a strong, intelligent female if she slapped you across the face. 
which you're such a beta, you might actually kind of like that. I mean, <laughs> that's, I love that. The, you know what? It's it's this is this is what to me a presidential campaign should be all about. This is not you know Donald Trump doesn't need to come out and and defend himself against every attack. Donald Trump does not need to come out and say anything about these these horrific remarks that Mark Cuban made. This 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 ridiculous misogynistic, sad and mean commentary that he he made on the View. Which, by the way, I mean, if you if you really want to say something like this, you should actually say it to the women who are involved. Which, in fact, if you look at the uh, New York Post today, let me pull this up real quick. The New York Post, the New York, this is the cover of the New York Post today. Say it to their faces. And you've got a whole, a whole litany. Look at this. Anna Paulina Luna's up there. You've got Sage Steele. You've got Kellyanne Conway. Melania, of course. Uh, Christy Noam right in the front. Kaylee McEnany. It's all the strong, intelligent women who Donald Trump has surrounded himself with. And there's tons of them. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, in addition to being... In addition to being his former White House press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is now the governor of the state of Arkansas. You don't get to be the governor of the state of Arkansas unless you're a strong, intelligent woman. Or unless you're Bill Clinton and you sleep with a lot of strong, intelligent women. Here's another one, Kellyanne Conway. You know Kellyanne Conway. For, if you don't, let's review. Kellyanne Conway is the only woman to successfully lead a winning presidential campaign. No other winning presidential campaign has been helmed by a woman. Kellyanne Conway was the first and the only one to do it. And now she is still an outspoken advocate for President Donald Trump. Here's what she said. Hey, it's Kellyanne Conway with a special message for Mark Cuban and all the other misogynists that support Kamala Harris and love to spew hateful, divisive, sexist rhetoric. Recognize this place? This is the ellipse, where presently a strong, intelligent woman is speaking without a teleprompter. Boom. Recognize that place? That's the White House. Your handpicked candidate, Hillary Clinton, lived there as wife of a president, but not as the president. Donald J. Trump beat her in part because he is unafraid to surround himself with strong, intelligent, capable, men and women. There you go. And that goes on. I mean, that's, and look, and I love it. It's like, it's not just trolling Mark Cuban. It's throwing in attacks on, <laughs> it's throwing in attacks on Hillary Clinton. It's throwing in attacks on Kamala Harris, which you have to do when you're, when you're a surrogate. This is Caroline Levitt. Uh, she is the current white um, press secretary for the Trump campaign. You've probably seen her all over the place. Uh, she's in the office. They did a little TikTok video. She just had a baby, by the way, and she's still out there campaigning for President Trump. Here's Sage Steele. You never Steel. see Donald Trump around strong, intelligent women. That's the quote, Mark Cuban. I got to say, I, I have known you and respected you and loved you for a really long time and have watched every single one of the comments you've made over the last several months. And I don't agree with them, but I respect them. And what you just said there is disrespectful and it crosses the line. How about Tulsi Gabbard? Let me ask you about Tulsi, your friend Tulsi. Right? Great point. At the end of the day, if she had not left the Democratic Party, I bet that you would think that she's strong and intelligent but because she crossed the line. She's not. Maybe more importantly, how about personally? I know we know each other. You and I sat next to each other. Remember at the IU basketball game when Bob Knight came back four and a half years ago? Me and my daughter for a couple of hours. And you sat and you talked to, forget about me, how about my young daughter, who I think is intelligent, who looked up to you? How about your own daughters? What if someday they decide to, to think differently than you with their politics? Are they not strong and unintelligent? What is that? You talk about not being divisive and look at what you're doing. Shocking, because I thought I knew who you were in your heart and your core. I know you're a damn good businessman and this is just stupid. I don't get it, Mark. Not okay. I don't, man, that was, that's one of the harshest ones right there anyway. I don't get it. You, me, we were friends. You talked to my daughter. What about your own daughters? What if one day they come home and say, daddy, I think I'm a Republican. Are you gonna tell them that they're weak and stupid? You know, Mark Cuban, they always, Mark Cuban's such a great, they always hear this, Mark Cuban's such a great businessman. Mark Cuban's such an amazing, but is he really a great businessman? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know his entire history, but I know that he came up with a sports betting app and became a billionaire. Is it really, I mean, is it really hard to become a billionaire by opening an online casino? I feel like if you open an online casino or any online betting operation, you're pretty much printing money. 
What was he did after that? He bought a sports team. Okay. Is it, is it, is, has a sports team ever been a bad investment? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. The Jaguars are the horriblest team ever assembled. The owner doesn't seem to care. The coach doesn't seem to care. They have a losing record, but you know what? They're still worth over a billion dollars and their value increases year after year after year. Is Mark Cuban really an amazing businessman or is he just a guy who got lucky and managed to hang on to some of his money? Now, again, the list goes on and on. There's more and more. I can see there's, uh, oh, this is Mercedes Schlapp, who, um, who's uh, you know, a prom prominent Republican, worked with the RNC. There's Carrie Lake. I mean, again, this is, oh, this is great. This is Marge. This is, oh, that's the parody account. There was one from Drea de Matea, uh, Matteo, who I wanted to bring up. Let me see if I can find that one. Uh, but over and over again, I mean, it is, it is just wild. It is just wild. What is it? This is a photo. Look at this. This is a photo of <laughs> Mark Cuban. Uh, hugging on some woman at a party. They apparently, they appear to be inebriated, but I can neither confirm, I can neither confirm nor deny that. I wanted to play the Drea De Mateo one because she was, uh, she was on fire. She was on fire with Mark Cuban's comments. She was, she was going off on Mark. Oh, here's Alina Habba. Uh, Habba. She is Donald Trump's attorney. We spoke with her just the other day at Mar-a-Lago. She was on the red carpet for the premiere of Line in the Sand, the new movie with uh, from James O'Keefe and, and Tucker Carlson. Let's, let's, she's going to she's going to rip him a new one. Listen to this. I just got off a plane, so pardon my delay in responding to Mark Cuban's disgusting, misogynistic remarks. Told you. Some reservos. Michael Cohen on three levels just confirmed and denied by the Supreme Court of the United States. I'm licensed in four states. I graduated college in three years. Savage v. Trump. By the way, I could keep going, but those are the cases I win. And your left-wing media and your rhetoric and you're putting women down. See, President Trump doesn't do that. He surrounds himself with strong women like me. So Mark Cuban, you can go to hell. I'm voting for Trump because I want my daughter to never, ever be around people that speak like you do. Wow, that was that was. <laughs> she, and she, and she's intense like that. By the way, like I said, I just interviewed her the other day. She is one hundred. She is very, uh, very intense. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> Mark Cuban. And here's the thing: he did apologize, and I'll read you his apology. I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of a an apology, but I didn't, you know, I didn't think it was an amazing apology. I don't. I know a lot of people thought it was kind of a half-assed apology. Uh, here, let me play you this one though, because this is Drea De Matteo from The Sopranos. Listen to. Listen to what she said, decked out, by the way, in her MAGA cap while she's uh, while she's responding to Mark Cuban. I don't really know who Mark Cuban is. And I don't really give a shit. Oh, I am interested <laughs> in what his definition of strength and intelligence is when it comes to women, because he seems to be an authority mm. on that subject. And um, he says there's no strong, intelligent women surrounding Trump. <sighs> Guess you haven't met me yet, buddy, huh? Because it takes a lot of balls to come out and support the anti-war machine, and you know it. Everyone else is pandering on the left in my little Hollywood world. Everybody over there is following that great sheep narrative for the great leap forward. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, all of my left-behind liberal friends, I'm still a lifelong liberal, go research it understand what's happening on the left. And if you want to attack our intelligence and say that we aren't smart enough because we follow Donald Trump, maybe you need to recognize that some of us did our research and that's why we left the left, why we're not sitting. All these hippies are moving over and supporting Trump. That's right, I'm wearing a MAGA hat. That means make America great again. What is so toxic about making anything great? How nihilistic has society become that you will listen to the people on the left trying to lead you into complete war and destruction and darkness? And you want to attack our intellect because we're supporting the sunshine and freedom and love? Shame on you. I don't know who you are, buddy, but you are not thinking about my children when you make comments like that. Yeah, the bet. By the way, the most insulting thing you can say to someone like Mark Cuban is, "I don't know who you are, buddy." 
because people like Mark Cuban, they live and thrive and are, are driven by ego. Mark Cuban believes he's the this massive star, this business success, this entrepreneurial uh, guru. Mark Cuban's always out there slinging advice. He's sitting on Shark Tank. He's trying to invest in people. He goes on The View and tries to lecture women about how dumb they are and how unintelligent they are and how weak they are for supporting Donald Trump. And that is all him trying to make him prop himself up. So bravo to Dre De Mateo, because again, if you see an egomaniac like Mark Cuban walking down the street, if you see an egomaniac like Mark Cuban spewing this hatred and this BS and these misogynistic comments, if you ever see someone like Mark Cuban who's out there trying to make themselves bigger and better than they actually are, the best way to knock them back down is to say, who are you? <laughs> Who? Wait, who are you? I don't even know who you are. Never heard of you. Mark Huben? He did say, uh, he did say he apologized. He wrote, when I said this during the interview, I didn't get it out exactly the way I thought I did. So I apologize to anyone who felt slighted or upset by my response. As I said, it wasn't about Trump voters, supporters, or employees, current or former, and I set myself up for the six-second soundbite. No excuses, can't nail every interview. My skin is thick enough. What bothers me, though, is that so many of the comments or media in support of or against me has some level of insult attached to it. Not just here, but everywhere. I'm not blaming anyone. We are where we are. Here's hoping that changes at least a bit in a week. Now, this is probably one of the worst apologies I've ever seen. If you're going to apologize to people, you apologize to people. And he didn't apologize to all women or women who uh, he insulted. He apologized to anyone who felt slighted or upset. But then he went in to say, what bothers me? If you're apologizing, nobody cares what bothers you. You're supposed to apologize and, and put a period on it. As Joe Biden likes to say, apologize, period. Mark Cuban doesn't do that. Mark Cuban says, I apologize. But you know what really bothers me is, and this is this is rich, the insult. Every single comment against me has some level of insult attached to it. Here's hoping that changes. This dude goes on and insults dozens and dozens and dozens of strong, intelligent women by saying if they support Trump, if they work with Trump, if they're loyal to Trump, if they believe in what Trump believes, if they vote for Donald Trump. Think about this. If you're a woman and you voted for Donald Trump, Mark Cuban believes that you are weak and stupid. And he's annoyed. He's bothered by the fact that people are insulting him. I got to tell you, I've been accused of being an egomaniac. I've been accused of being someone who's full of myself. But even I, I'm, I couldn't even imagine saying, you know what, what really bothers me is that when I insulted millions and millions of women by calling them stupid and weak, what bothers me is that people responding to me are insulting me. That's really, that's got to change. <laughs> uh, I told you, I tell you, I'm going to miss this campaign so much, so much.